Today in the news, we get a rebirth from AMD, some Alexa in our Xbox, and a struggling blackout. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. AMD has once again added a new chip to their arsenal, and this time they're bringing back the old school Athlon naming scheme. Not Athlon X, just Athlon. The new chip comes with three Vega compute units making it a perfect CPU for a media center, in my opinion. We only have the specs of one model, but apparently two others will be unveiled before the end of the year. The Athlon 200GE is a dual core 4 thread 14 nanometer processor that will fit on the AM4 socket. Performance wise at 3.2 GHz, this CPU is quite the little monster compared to its Intel price equivalent, the Pentium G4560. As you can see from this chart, you can do some super light gaming, but really, what's the point? For me, a CPU like this has three use case scenarios. One, you just want a cheap, good old PC that's going to allow you to do Word, Excel, and uh, PowerPoint. Two, you want a super low power home theater PC to watch movies and you want a Windows experience with it. Three, you want to upgrade to AM4 but don't have the money for the CPU of your dreams, so you buy this and wait for Zen 2. The two other models named the 220GE and 240GE don't have any specs listed, but honestly, they look like they might be a better buy over Overall, they probably won't be much more expensive and anything from a light clock speed improvement or more compute units would make them more worthwhile for me. The only thing I don't like is that these CPUs are locked. It's kind of annoying since pretty much all AM4 CPUs are unlocked right now. Would you buy a CPU like this or is this too low power for you? Let me know down below. Moving on, Microsoft seems to like Alexa a lot. I mean, after the integration with Cortana, Microsoft brings in Alexa support on Xbox One for voice controls. Now, the first thing that went through my mind was, well, wasn't that what the Kinect supposed to do? Well, yeah, but the Kinect got completely discontinued, so there's that. Anyways, nobody really used that feature because the Xbox couldn't even hear you half the time. Honestly, it makes sense. Sure, they could have used Cortana, but it's convenient if you already have an Alexa compatible device. The features are available for Xbox insiders to test out right now, and so far you can do things like power on and off, launch games and apps, capture screenshots, and more. I mean, pretty much the same thing you could do before with the Kinect. At least this time, it's integrated a little bit better than the whole Alexa and Cortana relationship. Instead of saying, Alexa, tell Cortana to start Destiny 2, you can just ask Alexa directly. Then we have HTC and Valve, which just opened their VR stores to Oculus Rift users. This might be seen as a move to push Oculus to do the same thing, but I highly doubt that Facebook would let that happen. At least, if you have an Oculus Rift, you can now use the subscription service in Viveport that allows you to access up to 60 games in a year for 80 bucks. The main problem with the store though is that out of the thousands of titles available on the Viveport store, only about 200 of them are confirmed to be compatible with the Oculus Rift. Still, it's pretty awesome to have a wider selection. Then in gaming, we have Black Ops 4, which might struggle at 60 FPS. The main game and the multiplayer modes found in older Call of Duties won't have a problem sustaining the 60 FPS, but Blackout, the Battle Royale mode, is a different story. If you play on a medium to high-end PC, don't worry about it. But if you have a base Xbox One, like me, or PS4, you might struggle to reach 60 FPS. Technically, it's still achievable since the frame rate will at least stay unlocked. But I guess this is probably going to happen if you're staring at a tree. Low frame rate is understandable in a battle royale setting with such graphics. I mean, look at PUBG and its struggle to keep a constant 30 FPS. But at least, if you have a FreeSync monitor and an Xbox One, you might feel it a little bit less. And now to answer a question from you guys, and today it is, what is the oldest PC I ever had? Well, if you're asking about my first proper PC, I remember it being a Pentium 4 in a big beige box, I think, and it could only run my programs at 256 colors. That's how I remember it. This is actually the first PC I ever made music on. Here's a little snippet of a beat I made back then. Ouch, that brings back some memories. 
Anyways, that's pretty much it for the news, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Don't forget to drop me a like down below and a comment with a question for me. Don't forget to click right here to subscribe to the channel and enable the notification with the little bell so that you get notified when I do a live stream. And right up here is the latest video. So you can click one of the two. Don't forget to stay frosty, and I'll see you on the next one. Oh!